So, if you haven't heard about quantum physics before this, I will show you kind of like really, really basic concepts. And this is just the level zero, so a stepping ground that you can start from and then go and study more if you want to. Maybe after the event, because it's going to be busy. And don't worry, just make sure that you use our quantum mentors or have a quantum physicist or someone knowing quantum computing in your team. So, the most fundamental of all physics theories is quantum physics. It explains the phenomena on the subatomic level, which means like protons, electrons, more atoms. And then again, even phenomena are at the very largest of scales as well. And why this uh, is it's, it's so spectacular, so to say, is that um, this phenomena cannot really be explained in classical physics, with the physics that explains the things that we experience and see, or even with common sense. It cannot, quantum mechanics cannot be described accurately without abstract mathematics, and cannot really be learned by just visualizing it, but this is not the point of this talk. So we will give ourselves the freedom to approach quantum mechanics from a phenomenological point of view. So, so what is quantum mechanical behavior then? Let's, let's look at this phenomenon that cannot be explained with classical physics or basic reasoning. What makes a system quantum mechanical? Let's see some really basic concepts. So to start with the word quantum, it comes from quantities. Um, quantities such as energy, momentum, angular momentum, they are restricted to discrete values in a bound quantum system. Bound, meaning that the system is confined, it's cold enough, it's isolated from its surroundings. So, kind of like a very good cooler at picnic. Uh, so, your fridge would be kind of like a bound system inside that cooler. And this is just a metaphor though. I only want to know that we are talking about very special circumstances where you witness quantum mechanical behavior. So we have a cooler to exhibit that behavior, but of course there are much, much more complex systems than, than what we have in physics labs. But something really familiar to everyone uh, that is quantum mechanical, uh, radiation. Like well, light in particular is a form of energy you can you can feel how uh, the sunlight warms up your skin. And quantum mechanics tells us that if this occurs in discrete packages, quantities, and we call these quantities photons, and different wavelengths from photons correspond to different energies. So light is made out of these tiny little photons. So better keep that cooler closed unless you want that energy to transfer into your drinks and warm them up. And another important example, uh, especially when talking about quantum computer later on, um, is the concept of spin. It is an intrinsic form of angular momentum carried by really elementary particles. It tells us uh, which way and how strongly a particle is rotating or spinning, so to say. And this is just a metaphor again, because I must note that this is exact, not exactly what happens at those super tiny little scales, because the particles are mostly point-like. But it's a nice way to describe it and it gives us a way to handle this quantity. Now, you are able to change the direction but not the magnitude of, of spin. Uh, we represent the direction of the spin along the axis it rotates around, up or down. And then, these three concepts that I find most important describing quantum physics. So what makes quantum physics quantum? Let's uh, first talk about uh, wave-particle duality. What it says, shortly, is that quantum particles exhibit their properties both as waves as well as particles. So like for example, energy comes in small packages, these photons from, from the sun, but photons then again are light uh, and light waves as you might have learned from basic optics in school physics, for example. And to describe these quantum mechanical objects, we need to treat them through both of these properties. And then I will also introduce the concept of superposition. Uh, what this means for these quantum mechanical objects is that it is possible that a quantum object may possess several spatial configurations. That's just a fancy word of saying that they are at several places at once, kind of. Kind of like this, but even more sparsely. 
So that are by the way. And this is why we use these wave functions in the mathematical formation to describe our quantum objects. But similarly to other quantities, like the spin, uh, you can have spin up and down the same time in a way. So kind of like this, but you need to think of it more like not just up and down, but you kind of, if you look at it, it draws this, this sphere. So it has all these directions that you can do. So it's a bit something more than just the pieces of what it comes from. And also for many other quantum objects, they may possess several configurations of several, several things, like the color, the mood here. This is just sort of artistic representation. But it gives you an idea. It can be a lot of things at the same time, in a way. And also something that you might have heard of related to quantum physics is entanglement. So it means that two or more quantum particles may be intrinsically correlated no matter what the distance is between them. So correlated in a strong way so that the behavior of, of these particles and their quantities uh, are in a way uh, intrinsically acting together, so to say. This type of entanglement may be created, for example, when two particles hit each other, they can then become entangled, or they are created at the same time. So, in a way, they form a quantum mechanical system together on their own. Uh, what makes this phenomenon particularly intriguing is that we may take one of these particles as far as we want, like somewhere in far space, and, and then measure the one that we have with us on Earth. So, quantum theory guarantees us that this correlation between them two uh, it will not fail us, and we can be sure to know what the configuration of, of the far away object is only by measuring the one that we have with us. So, imagine what this can give us uh, related to information passing forward or, or messaging someone. And in particular, we don't have to wait for a lot of years for this uh, information to reach the other particle. So, but it happens instantly, and although Einstein has told us that information may not travel faster than the speed of light, and this is exactly why you have maybe heard that Einstein is calling entanglement a spooky action at a distance. But don't worry, there's nothing spooky about it. This is just a wonderful example about the quirkiness of and the wonder, wonders of quantum physics. So, very shortly, we have now gone through these basic concepts of quantum physics. I will introduce them a bit more, maybe go over them again later on as we start the actual official event today. But still, we cut a lot of corners. But I, I want to show you a little things about quantum games that have been developed pre previously throughout the years. So um, not, now a quantum game might be connected to a numerical simulation, for example, uh, that is solved in a research program through citizen science, or even run on a quantum computer. But of course, this event is short, so most quantum games from quantum game channels, they might just have a thematic connection to quantum physics, and usually through the theme of the event. So quickly showing you a couple of examples here. So, uh, a lot of games incorporate the ideas of quantum phenomena to a set of clear rules for the game, uh, but the effect itself might not be based on an actual calculation. Like a character might be able to switch between different forms or go through two routes at the same time, and both of these representing uh, the actor's quantum superposition, for example. There's been a lot of mazes, like uh, one of my favorites is this Cubic the Barbarian. The difference here is that uh, an actual uh, quantum computer was being able to use to generate this, this puzzle that you need to solve, and, and all this maze that you go through. We'll actually have uh, two talks tomorrow, uh, of the creators of this particular game and a lot of other quantum game jam games. But some of the games before they have incorporated like a numerical simulation that is determining like the placement of a particle that you're playing with. So mostly they are like puzzle games or something like this. Um, there was this uh, citizen science game prototype called Hamster Wave uh, that was generated in 2019. And this is actually using a tool that was designed for citizen science prototypes. You're controlling the shape of the wave that is actually uh, coming from the numerical simulation or 
calls you directly. And then there were some, like most of the games that we have had, they just use random number generator. And it's okay, like just using kind of like inspiration from a theme, so to say. 